Welcome into the December 22nd episode of the Locked On Leafs podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Morissuti. It's a Maple Leafs game day as they welcome the Philadelphia Flyers to town today. It's the it's the next-gen game, Dave. The next-gen afternoon affair uh, as they do each and every year. So we'll tee that up for you guys and get some practice updates into you as well from yesterday. And Christmas is only a couple of days away, Dave. We haven't done any Christmas-themed anything on the show so far. So we thought, you know what, let's take a couple of minutes and do a little Christmas themed bit. And we're going to do what would we gift to the Toronto Maple Leafs? If we were, you know, Santa Claus or if we're buying something for a significant other, which happens to be Toronto, what gift would we give them? So that's what we'll be doing on today's show as well. All that more coming up on today's edition of Locked On Leafs. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, your one-stop shop for all things Leafs. I'm your host, Mike DiStefano from TSN 1050 Toronto Radio, also known as Al's brother on TSN's Overdrive and TSN 1050's Leafs Lunch. Joining me, it's my co-host, Dave Morsuti from Sportsnet, also a writer for the NHLPA. Locked On Leafs is a daily Maple Leaf-centric podcast. Be sure to subscribe for free. Wherever you get your podcast from, you can also now catch us up on uh, video format. Just look us up on YouTube, Locked on Leafs on YouTube. Hit subscribe and get new videos directly to you each and every day, Monday through Friday. It's all Leafs, all the time. Perfect for Leafs Nation. All right. It's an interesting day today because every year around this time, Christmas time, the last game before the Christmas freeze, which will um, you know go down after tonight's game, is the next-gen game that the Leafs take part in every year. And it's a 2 p.m. game. It's a home game every season. And uh, I always look forward to it because they're typically very high-scoring games. <laughs> they have been in the past at the very least, especially when they're playing the Carolina Hurricanes. But they've got the Philadelphia Flyers, Dave, in town to uh, to go up against. I mean, not quite the Carolina Hurricanes, but still maybe a night where we could see some high scoring, but most likely on – one side of the ice i would hope so i mean considering how the last game went between these two teams and the trajectory the flyers have been on anything but a, a big like I'm, I'm expecting something similar to what we saw against the ducks well, like that's and, that's the expectation yeah i i think i'd agree with that actually like it should be a uh it should be point night for a lot of these maple leafs out there tonight against philadelphia and I mean, if you recall, the last time these two teams played against each other, it was a 5-5-2, I believe, was the final, or 5-1 or 5-2. But that was what legitimately changed the trajectory of this team, of the Toronto Maple Leafs, right? That was the first game coming off of that California road trip was against the Philadelphia Flyers. They won that game, and they parlayed that into what has become of this team from there on out and into that very successful November, which they've certainly carried out through to December. So, um, you know, hopefully that's uh, that's a good omen, I suppose, that, that they're playing a team that, you know, kick-started the, the, the season to get off to a good start. So hopefully that means that they can have another great game against them tonight. Um, they're going to be wearing their black jerseys tonight, the, the, the Bieber-inspired jerseys, which which I always think they're, like, they're, they're pretty sweet looking, I'll be honest with you. Like, I'm not going to go buy one by any stretch of the imagination, but I do like them. Um, interestingly enough, though, I don't know if you caught this at practice today, I thought Dryden Hunt was going to be making his debut in this game. He is not making his debut in this game, but he was like in the practice lines through doing line rushes um, today on the fourth line. He was in a regular white sweater, which traditionally means he is going to play and he is a starter for tomorrow's game. And that wasn't the case because after practice, Sheldon Keefe came out and said, no, Dryden Hunt's actually not going to play tomorrow. He took line rushes and, and he's going to do the same again tomorrow. But Zach Aston Reese is actually going to uh, to play come game time. So a little bit of a, a mixed message there from Sheldon Keefe. But why not play Dryden Hunt? Like that this is I, I, this is a game against the Philadelphia Flyers, one of the worst teams in the National Hockey League. Why not give him an opportunity to see what he can do in this game? 
Yeah, like we remember how long we waited before Connor Timmons could make his debut. I kind of understood that a little bit more because, you know, you're not just going to throw anybody on the blue line. We're talking about like the fourth line player going against one of the worst teams in the, like, worst teams right now in the NHL. Like, I don't understand, like, like, this is where I think sometimes coaches get a little too, too picky about how they, they, do their game plan like this is the perfect opportunity to get the guy in for his first game you know you can play him probably more than you would expect to play a fourth line because you're kind of hoping to have a big lead and you get to play those guys a little bit more i understand that maybe you know it's a tough conversation when you have to take somebody out of the lineup and it's because you but it's also like it's a team game you got to get make sure that all these guys are getting in and that they're all because you know Knock on wood, an injury can happen, and guess what? Dryden Hunt goes from having, you know, they 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 kind of lose the opportunity to get him in at the right moment, rather than they ha- all of a sudden now have no choice but to put him in. Like I I feel like just like he's been here for a little bit, he's taking line rush, he's practicing. What more does he need to do to get himself into a game, especially a game like this? Yeah, and and I wonder. <laughs> I don't know why he's not playing. It seems like it should be, but I wonder if like the time of the game, like it's a two o'clock game, which means they're not going to have, you know, another morning skate practice there. It's just, they had the one practice on Wednesday and then that's it. Maybe if there was another morning skate that he could have went out there and, and got some more work in, then they would feel more comfortable playing him. But because of the way that the schedule set up, perhaps maybe, um, maybe not, but either way, we'll have to wait until after the Christmas holiday to see, uh, Dryden Hunt in a Maple Leafs uniform. Um, it was funny though because he so he chose to wear number twenty, and uh, I mentioned that today on Leafs Lunch, and I got a text from another former number twenty uh, who was for the Maple Leafs, uh, good pal and friend of the show, Frank Corrado, who did not score a whole lot of goals when he was a member of the Maple Leafs. So texting me saying, "Hey, there's a lot of goals left in that jersey," which I thought was kind of funny. So maybe. Dryden Hunt can uh, can can find some magic, I guess, and score the goals that Frankie, unfortunately, did not. Uh, one other lineup difference that we will see that we uh, from the game the other night against Tampa, Rasmus Sandin went out with injury. We had spoken about that on yesterday's show, but we didn't have all the details, and we still don't really have all the details. Um, the, the they really just said we're still going to evaluate him, um, but he's not going to play in the game against Philadelphia. And he probably will miss, you know, the, the next week, I suppose, with this Christmas break coming up. Um, so Jordy Ben is back and Jordy Ben will get back into the lineup and he'll slide right up beside Timothy Lilligren. So they're not going to touch the Geo Hall pairing. They're not going to touch the Brody and Timmons pairing. Jordy Ben just going to slide right into where Sandine was and he's going to play alongside Timothy Lilligren. And last time we saw Jordy Ben, he was playing some pretty solid hockey, right? That was when. Um, Brody first went out. He had to come in and play in that game, and it was against the, his former team in the Canucks, and he played extremely well. I'm, he scored a goal in that game, if I'm not mistaken, and he played very good hockey for a few games before he got hit with the injury bug. So he slides back into the lineup. Um, excited to see what Jordy Bent will be able to bring in his return. Yeah, I, I, I don't mind that that's what they're going to do. You don't want to make major shakeups of the blue line. The blue line has been pretty good. So, and I and Jordy Ben, he's a veteran. He's a pro. He can kind. Of, he, I, I feel like he can kind of manage to play with really anybody in the lineup too. So like, it's not like you're shell. Like they're not probably going to shelter him too much. They're probably going to meet some deployment changes and how they deploy the defense a little bit. But at the same time, they're also playing a home game. You get the matchups. You get to dictate who goes against who. So I, I don't mind that that and i'm i'm very actually looking forward to seeing jordy Ben get in like this is the type of game philly's not you know they're they're a bit of a tougher team they got some bruisers i want to you know it's nice that they're going to get a, a someone like jordy ben in the lineup to kind of counteract that a little bit yeah like they're not the old school broad street bullies but i mean when you play under john tortorella you're still gonna have to play with the a, 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 a you know an edge a little bit right like you're gonna have to play that style of game and they do have some heavier players. So I guess getting Jordy Ben in there um, to maybe counteract some of that could help out on the blue line. So we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. But he will get into the game. And that pretty well is going to be the only change that the Maple Leafs uh, will be making. Well, actually, that's a lie. We're going to have uh, – actually, wait. Who's starting tonight? Matt Murray, right? 
Matt Murray, uh, or the season of goal? No, I think about it. Did they name a starter for that? <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember seeing a starter being named. It wouldn't surprise me if they continued the rotation a little bit, considering they're going to be off. I'm going to check right now. I believe I saw Matt Murray was like in the starters net. I suppose after I that. I have confirmation that it is Ilya Samson uh, Sam, uh, Samsonov per Sheldon Keith. There it is. Ilya really Samsonov was is named the starter. I thought that was the case. I couldn't remember exactly, but makes sense. So Samsonov going to get uh, his final game in before the Christmas break, trying to avenge himself from um, you know the the loss the other night. A, and so we'll see what ends up happening there. Obviously, the last game he played was against Washington. Didn't like his performance, so he'll have an opportunity to bounce back um, between the pipes. And, you know, hopefully it, uh, well, it goes his way, I guess. And that's, that's really all we can hope for at this point. All right, let's take a, a quick break. When we get back, we'll go through our three keys to tonight's game. And then uh, what would you gift the Toronto Maple Leafs for Christmas this year? We'll get to that also in a GIF. Uh, but first, I do want to tell you about one of today's show sponsors. And as per usual, it's betonline.net, your number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from pro football to college bowl season, the NHL, basketball. We've got it all at betonline.net. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online, it's where the game starts. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano. Got Dave Morissuti with me. We are hosts here at Locked On Leafs. Um, Toronto, next gen game tonight. It's a 2 p.m. puck drop, people. So, uh, you know, hopefully you got your afternoons off and you'll be able to watch this game because it's at 2 o'clock midday, a little after after lunch. Catch the, the, the hockey game. And then we'll kind of roll right into dinner almost at that point. But, um, you know, last time they played, Toronto got themselves back on track and started playing the way that we thought they could play and how they've started to continue that into how they're currently playing. Um, So what do you think are the three keys today, this afternoon, for Toronto to continue what they've done and come away with with a, a two points before the Christmas break? You just got to continue to really take the game plan from Tampa, translate it over to the Philadelphia Flyers, you know, dominate possession. Don't give Philly those cheap chances on that. Like, Philly's not going to generate a ton of chances, so don't give them the freebies. Avoid the freebies. They did a good job against that against Tampa, but against a team like Philly, you may underestimate them a little bit. You might loosen things up a little bit. And that's the last thing you want to do. Like, this is not a trap game by any sense, but at the same time, Philly is going to try to play this as if this is their Stanley Cup. Yeah, probably. And it's kind of the last game before the holidays. So, I mean, Philly might even be like, let's just get in there, play this game, and then go home, go go see the families. Um, so they may even be looking ahead of this game too, which could bode well for Toronto, which is why I think just get off to a good start. You know, I think that's what happened in Tampa. They got up one, nothing, they ended up adding it, got its a second goal. And then they were able to kind of coast from there and just play some solid, uh, solid defense. And it worked out well. And I think that's been a big part of what Toronto's success has been recently. They're getting out to leads and then they're just being able to defend those and, and they winning a lot of hockey games that way. So one of mine is is just get off to a, a good start, score early, hopefully score often, and uh, and then just defend in the third period and, and defend that lead and just pick up those two points. Um, the other one, and a way to do that is continue to stay connected. You know, the way that the this team has been able to, and this is really over the course of the last six weeks, I would say, you know, transport the puck from their defensive end into the offensive zone has been great. Um, and, and it's a really reason because – you know, they're playing simple hockey. They're making easy um, passes. They're not making long passes, too. And it's because they're playing well on their own end. They've got five guys down below the hash marks. And it makes it a lot easier to break the puck out when you're doing, um, you know, five-foot passes to your teammate as opposed to 25-foot passes like what was happening earlier. Less chance for turnovers, too. And then these guys are skilled enough to skate the puck up the ice with speed, break into the neutral zone, and all of a sudden they're into the O zone and they're setting up and they've got the guys – who can score once they establish that ozone possession, which they've been doing a lot recently. So staying connected, playing fast, 
um, continue to to get off to good starts. And then finally, I mean, this is an easy one, but, you know, special teams. Just go out there and kill off all the penalties you can and then make them pay when they take penalties. And this is a team that's prone to doing so. Um, so if you can get a couple of power play goals, not something they've done a whole lot of lately. I know they did score the other night on the power play. Rasmus Sandin not here, so we may see that five-man unit more often in this game. Or maybe Giordano ends up with an opportunity in the top uh, power play unit. Um, but either way, I think if they can get a couple power play goals, uh, that'll really help them go a long way with with winning this game. Because I don't see the Flyers getting a whole lot of offense. So they continue to play their game at five on five. They maybe get a power play goal or two to extend and stretch that lead. No doubt in my mind, this could be point night. This could be a blowout. And the Leafs will be happy heading into the Christmas break. Yeah, exactly. You you, you want to go into the Christmas break on a, on a high note. There's a game like this can and, – and, and I, I, I always love these games because all the last gen uh, – the all the future gen games have always been like offensive showcases. Yeah. Mitch Marner has had like that memorable performance against the Carolina Hurricanes not too long ago. Like you want you want you want Leafs fans to go into this Christmas break kind of feeling good about what the last month have brought, right? Last thing you want is to like be like really loose to the Flyers and kind of ruin Christmas for some people because you know that's exactly what would happen. So yeah, it just you know, this is this month and a half, pretty much from November on. This stretch of Leafs hockey has been pretty, pretty great to watch. So just can let that be, let that be the narrative going into the hall into the holiday break. That's pretty much where I where I'm at at this point. Yeah, completely agree with that. Um, you know, I think it's it's going to be important too. There's a lot of turmoil, though, going on in Philadelphia that I want to touch on really quickly. Did you see what's going on with um, Kevin Hayes and John Tortorella? Absolutely ridiculous. Like, Well, let's, let's break. So for those who aren't paying attention to what's going on out in Philadelphia, this guy's the team's leading scorer, right? Kevin Hayes, literally leading scorer, nearly a point a game. And he was healthy scratched over the weekend in a game against New York Rangers. They got blown out in that game, shockingly. They're a terrible hockey team, but they lost 6-3 to three in that game. And afterwards, um, Philadelphia went and they beat Columbus, who was somehow an even worse hockey team than Philadelphia uh, the other night. And <laughs> uh, Torts was asked about it. Oh, what would you think of Kevin Hayes' game? And he didn't really answer the question. What he said was something to the effect of, He just blew up and was like, you guys are trying to put a wedge in between me and my player. It's not going to happen. It's not going to work. I'm not going to answer any questions about this guy. It's like, I mean, you're the one who healthy scratched the guy two nights ago. He's your leading scorer for Pete's sake. We're not putting a wedge into anything. You're the one who's making these moves. And I I just think, like, right now, Torts, when it comes to his best players out there, might not be gelling, which could also bode well for Toronto if that – you know, if there's a little bit of turmoil inside that Philly dressing room. Yeah, like when I saw the tour, the news that, you know, John Toro was scratching uh, Kevin Hayes, I'm just like, that's such a torts move. Like, a Kevin team that's Hayes, not... He also has, just by the way, four more years, or he's on three more years after this one, making over seven and a seven yeah. point one million. Like, this isn't, this isn't someone that's supposed to be a part of your team's kind of, you know, I don't know how much a future the the Philadelphia Flyers have with this core that's there, but like this is not a guy like Kevin Hayes most likely will be here longer than John Tortorella will be. Like that that's the part. Like, do you is it worth fracturing that relationship to? I don't even think that's, that doesn't even send a message. Really, in a way, sometimes it sends the wrong message because from what I've heard is Kevin Hayes is a really beloved guy in the locker room, not just because he's the leading goal scorer, but because He's seen as a leader on this team. So I, I don't know if this is just Tortorella also kind of trying to send a message to the team saying, all right, I'm going to scratch the guy that you all love because, you know, I'm not ha- happy with the way you're playing, which is the dumbest thing I think a coach can do. But Dude, I, we've, seen it, we've seen it before with this guy. When he was in Columbus, Patty Lyonet, take a seat. Pierre-Luc Dubois, take a seat. Didn't care. 
Like if the guys, if if the players aren't playing to the ability that John Tortorella believes, and I can't, I kind of respect him for it because he's got the nuts to make this move and make this yep. call. He benches them and he doesn't play them. And, and like when Mitch Marner got that one shift benching earlier this season, you know, I kind of wished that Keith had done more of a Tortorella thing. I remember saying that at the time where I was like, if you're going to bench someone, make it longer than one shift, right? Like basically they made it as long as it would have taken him to go take a leak and come back to the bench. And it's like, Oh, you missed a shift while you were gone. That's okay. Get out there for the next one. That's essentially what happened. And um, I, I kind of commend him for, for doing this and respect him for that. But at the same time, it's like, man, is it really worth it to completely healthy scratch a player for uh, for maybe not buying into the to the system and structure that you want out of him. I don't know. I don't know, but there certainly is a bit of turmoil through that. And I, I heard some people in in Philadelphia talking about how potentially he could be bought out this summer. Maybe they're going to look to try and trade him and retain some salary to get him to get him moved because towards uh, it just he might want to leave the team. I don't know. But it certainly isn't uh, isn't good, and it's a team that's not very good. And I mean, they're going in the wrong direction anyway. Um, and, and I mean, Toronto's won what four in a row against this team too. Yeah, four in a row against these guys. So they should uh, they should make it five in a row and should be able to get the victory here. All right, we'll take a break. When we get back, Dave, let's uh, talk about what we want to give Toronto for Christmas. You know, what do we want to gift them? For Christmas, what present do they need to see under the tree to put the smile on faces of Kyle Dubas and the Toronto Maple Leafs? We'll find out on the other side. But first, Dave, how about a word from one of our show sponsors? Yes, and that is the NHTSA with a special holiday season message for all of you. Did you know that driving high is considered driving under the influence? That's right. Driving under the influence of marijuana is against the law in every state, even in states where marijuana is legal. That means driving high could get you a DUI. And if you think a law, if you think law enforcement officers can't tell when you're driving high, you're wrong. Your friends can tell, your coworkers can tell, even your parents can tell, everyone can tell. So what makes you think that law enforcement officers don't know when you're driving high? Driving under the influence of marijuana can slow your response time and change how you perceive time and speed. So even if you think you're fine to drive when you're high, you're not. Because the bottom line is, if you feel different, you drive different. And driving high is under is driving under the influence. So remember, drive high, get a DUI. This is paid for by NHTSA. Driving high ain't cool, guy. Not ain't at cool. all. Not at all. Uh, welcome back into the Locked On These podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano. Dave Morris, studio, my co-host, here with me. We put out shows each and every weekday, Monday through Friday. It's all Leafs all the time. If you consider yourself a diehard Leaf fan, you got to be subscribed to us here on Locked On Leafs. We're building our family. We're building our subscribership, our fan base, our loyal listeners. But we need the help of y'all to share it throughout this holiday season and hopefully we can grow it even more you can also check out the discord where that family keeps growing by the day see new people getting added into the discord um and getting in on the fun especially on game day so we got that game tonight at two o'clock 2 p.m i guarantee you we'll have some people and they'll be getting after it on that discord talking about the game um so make sure that you also uh sign up and, and get into that discord channel to be in on the conversation all right, speaking of conversation, I wanted to have a discussion and talking about you know, a little Christmas-themed discussion, I suppose, what we would give the Toronto Maple Leafs for Christmas. What gift would you like to give them? Um, so, Dave, I'll let you go first. You know, you're know, you going out and you need to gift this team something you believe they need um, this Christmas season to wrap up, put it under the tree for them to open up Christmas morning. What would it be? It would be that top six left winger to play with John Tavares and Mitch Marner. Who is that, Dave? Who is that? Come on, give it to me. Who me some is it? Oh man. Give me some names. I I kind of been slowly looking at names, and there's not many that you can really say that make the most sense in terms of like absolute fits. At one point I was like on the Patrick King 
bring him to Toronto. And I'm like, ah, it seems less likely that he even gets moved by Chicago or even gets moved and at least have what, you know, what Chicago would want. Uh, I kind of brought up when you were away, I did talk about Bo Horvat as a potential target for the Leafs. And then I'm like, that just seems like another guy that the Leafs would like to have, but just probably won't be able to afford. That'd be costly. Very costly. Yeah. And the fact that he's going to be a pending uh, UFA as well, like, are you going to spend all that for another pending UFA? Like, someone's like, oh, you know, we'll take Matthew Nyes and a bunch of other stuff. I'm like, I'm not trading Matthew Nyes for a rental. Like, no, it's just not going to happen. Matthew Nyes would be a potential nice fit if that if he could. But I don't want to put that on him as like, you know, here you go, buddy. First uh, crack at the NHL, you got to produce top six. Dude, it what? might happen. It might happen come April, like come March, yeah. when he's done with the college season. And he signs. If they don't make that addition at the deadline, I think it would be because they expect for him to make an impact there. I, yeah, I don't like, that if they don't make a move, or if they decide to address the blue line instead and roll the dice on on Yarncroc, or hope that Robertson gets back and gets healthy, like another guy who they look at as a potential internal solution for come playoff time at least, would be a Matthew Nice. Yeah. Another name that actually a friend of mine brought up to me, he's like, what do you think of Timo Meyer? Oh, yeah. I was thinking about Meyer too. The problem with him is he's also almost like a rental, one-year rental as well. Because although his cap hits low, and, and you could work that and make it work for Toronto, uh, he has a qualifying offer of $10 million for next year. I don't think the Maple Leafs can afford to pay Timo Meyer 10 sheets next year. And I heard that they'd be looking for like an Alex to bring it level of return. So that's a first round pick, you know, a couple other picks, maybe a prospect. And I just, I don't know if they want to do that for a one year rental. Yeah. And I key, I also have heard people say Ryan O'Reilly, which he'd be the perfect guy to have for the playoffs, but he's yeah. also, I'm, like I don't know where St. Louis is kind of feeling like where they are in terms of like selling or adding, right? They're kind of in that tweener spot, and that's the worst thing to be in. They're a weird team because they'll like win three in a row and they'll lose four or five in a row. Then they'll win five in a row, and then they'll lose another four games. And it's like, where is this team going? It's been such a yo-yo season for St. Louis, just zero consistency whatsoever it's either consistently good or consistently bad a lot of that also hinges on the play of jordan bennington whether or not he's on his you know on his a game i suppose um but yeah a couple those are a couple of names i've been thinking of too here's one interesting one i've been i've been turned down by a couple of people so i'm curious to get your thoughts on it's the first time that i brought this up on this show um and it's a man that we'll see in today's game how about james van reemsteig former toronto maple leaf Left winger, top six guy, you know, played in Toronto before, power forward. Um, I think he's, like, averaging a point per game so far this season with the Philadelphia Flyers. I mean, what do you think? Maybe maybe you bring back JVR for a reunion? I don't think it costs a whole lot. Well, that's the thing. It won't cost a lot. But here's the two issues I have with it. One being his, his health. He's only played 13 games this season. And that's kind of been his M.O. since he went to Philadelphia. I loved him as a Maple Leaf. I thought that he was a guy that, you know, brought that. He was, like, probably one of the better players playing in front of the net. Like, just doing doing all those things in front of the net that made made the Leafs pretty successful, you know, when he first got there. Problem two. To be honest with you. Actually, keep keep going. Problem number two is you're probably going to have to find – you're going to have to do kind of the cap shenanigans that you had to do with, like, the Nick Felino, where you had to find two teams to take on the salary, right? Because $7 million cap it. That's not something the Leafs can just say, yep, give me here. Like, no, you got to have to do the whole – probably double retain potentially to make that salary work. Yeah, you might have to do that. But I think Philly would probably retain. Because it would give them oh a, definitely they'll retain. It would give them a bigger bigger thing. So Philly retains half. You're at three and a half million. 
I don't think that's overly difficult. I mean, they probably, whatever you, I mean, maybe they would be interested in Alex Kerfoot, get an extra look at him because they could sign him for next year. Or maybe they would like to have a, a prospect or a pick of some kind, potentially. I don't, I don't know what it would, what it would cost. I don't think it would be a lot, but um, I think I read that if they made a trade, they could acquire uh, 4 million bucks in cap space. So they wouldn't even have to trade out any salary. 50% is retained by the Flyers. So I think it, it, it might work out. But what I was going to say is a big reason why I believe, not that it would be a good fit or that I think that it would work out like really well, um, but you talk about his finish around the net, and I've always been a big believer in that's where you score the goals in the playoffs. And that's kind of where the Maple Leafs have lacked in their goal scoring when it comes to the springtime. And if you bring in a guy like JVR, if he can get you a couple of those grinder goals within 10 feet of the net, five feet of the net, maybe it's a different story in a series. You know what I mean? Like, is he going to be an X factor for you? Absolutely not. But can he score a couple of goals, big goals at that point in a way that like Corey Perry does for, um, for the Tampa Bay lightning. I think he could potentially do that for you. So that was kind of my thought process on JVR. Um, just, because he can score in tight really, really well. Um, and he's still producing. Like I said, he's he's a point per game right now. He's got 20, he's got 12 points in 13 games. He has played um, full seasons in back to back years. Played the full 82 games last year, had 24 goals. Played the full 56 games the year before in the COVID shortened season. Had 43 points that season in 56 games. So, you know, he's a guy who has been rather. Um, rather healthy the last couple of years, obviously this year notwithstanding, uh, and, but he's been productive too. I understand that he's slowed down and he's not quite what he was when he was in his prime here in Toronto, but I still think that he's a player who could be effective and just someone who I've thought about the last couple of days and with him coming to Toronto, uh, he's going to be someone I'm definitely going to have an eye on in tonight's game to see you know what what type of game is left in, in James Van Riemsdyk. So that's another interesting name that has popped up on my radar. Um, so I guess I need to tell you what I would have on the yeah, what's on your list. I guess now it's on my list for the Toronto Maple Leafs. You know what's on my list? A magic healing stone, Dave. A magic healing stone. If I could gift this to this Maple Leafs team and give them a magic healing stone to rub on Morgan Riley's knee, to rub it on Nick Robertson's shoulder, to rub it on the head of Jake Muzzin, to rub it all over Matt Murray and his entire body to make sure he stays healthy the rest of the year. If I could rub it on Rasmus Sandin's neck. You see where I'm going with here? The Maple Leafs have been plagued with injuries this season. If I had some sort of magic healing stone that I could gift to this team to heal the players and ensure good health for this team, going forward, I think this team would be in a good spot because when they're fully healthy, when their lineup is 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 at top optimization, man, this is a Stanley Cup contender, like flat out. They 100% are, and they've shown that when they're healthy and playing to their potential, 100%. This is a Cup contender, arguably a top three team in the league right now, and that's not at full health and full strength. So I believe uh, if they could, if, if this existed and we could get this, that is what I would put under the tree. For this team good health in 2023 well you can wish for it that's the best thing you can do uh <laughs> that's, that's all you can do at this point you can't really hope for a magic stone oh, you, don't believe yeah. in magic? you don't believe in magic dave is that what you're telling me you think david blaine's just like you know focus, focus? Like, yeah. mind tricks is that what you, you don't think that he actually stabs things to his you think it's all mind tricks are you a david blaine guy do you know who I'm talking about? Do you know why? I know who you're talking about. I, I used to watch all that stuff, and eh, nah, I'm not. I, it, what was the other one? Chris Angel, Mind Freak? Yeah, that one's been somewhat exposed a little bit, I think. Yeah. Like, I just remember like that being like, okay, this is like really just too outrageous for me. Like, I I, I, I do watch quite a bit of David Blaine. I, I'm more into the, to the entertainment aspect of it. I'm not into the whole... I, I, I don't get too drawn up into the whole magic in, of of it. I think card magic is so dope. Like, oh, like, it's cool. Tricks, like card tricks. It's. I wish I could do them. I wish I had the sleight of hand, or the magic in my hands rather 
to uh to be able to pull some of that stuff off because if you know like that's the ultimate party thing like if you can do card tricks right. and you're at a party like everyone's like around you like i was at a party once and there was somebody who could do some close-up magic and, and card tricks and has some sleight of hand little situation going on and dude the amount of people who flocked to this guy and were just amazed and mind blown i mean everybody was you know tipsy and drunk but it's still very entertaining to watch i would say so that would be kind of cool but uh that's completely off topic obviously so what uh, mike is really hoping for for christmas is that uh, somebody can teach him how to do some uh some tricks with magic tricks with cards yes if anyone knows how to do some magic tricks with cards i i've tried i've, I've looked up like some youtube tutorials back in the day and i've given it a try i've done a couple but like i i don't know i just i can't seem to remember them like I, as I'm doing them live, watching it, I can do it. But then when I go upstairs to like show my family or try and do it on like a friend or something, I think like one of those is like, wait, what, wait, 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 what's wait, wait, did I do that right? Did I? Oh, oh no, I screwed it up. Ah, my bad. <laughs> Give me 20 minutes. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm going to do a card trick at some point. Okay, Dave, on this show, I'm going to do a card trick to you. That's what's going to happen. And we're going to do it live. On lockdown lease, and everyone's gonna be like, "Whoa, it's the next uh, David Blaine." You watch, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. But all right, let's. Uh, it's it's getting late, man. It's oh, it's past one a.m. at this point as we're recording this, so we're getting uh, we're getting a little little. I'm getting a little foolish here. All right, let's put a bow on today's show because uh, we got a a fun game that that'll be by the time people are listening to this, just mere hours away. Leafs, Flyers, next gen game, 2 p.m. puck drop in, in Toronto. The Bieber black jerseys will be worn. Should be a fun one. Uh, that'll do us do it for us here today on the podcast, though. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On These podcast wherever you get your podcast from. Subscribe to us on YouTube as well if you haven't already. Follow myself on Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore more suity the show as well at locked on leaves we'll be back with another episode tomorrow to wrap up the week ahead of christmas so we'll probably do another little christmas theme before uh, sending everybody off for the christmas holidays uh, but we'll be back with that episode for you guys tomorrow enjoy the game go leaves go until then we'll be back uh keep it locked right here on locked on leaves